Welcome to ATB TV. I'm Darren Dance here with Peter Morgandy, and we're at uh, Forest Lodge, Darren Weir's stables. How unusual. Something different, Darren. <laughs> Lovely warm day here, and the flies are pretty friendly, Pete. Well, um, found a bit of shade. I'm pleased to see you've recovered from uh, your Hong Kong experience yeah. and your uh, BJ experience at Bunningong. Well, if I had jet lag, it was soon buggied out of me on the Bunningong Golf Club. That was a bit of fun, and... Um, yeah, no, Hong Kong was brilliant, I think I've most said a few times, and probably took three or four days to get over it. I didn't believe the jet lag thing. The first day I was all right, but the next two days I was a bit tired, but the experience was well worth all that. Well, you're back in form now, and uh, I must say there was no form last night at the ATB uh, <laughs> dinner to celebrate Christmas with our team. Uh, the singing um, rated pretty poorly, Pete. And for those who didn't see it on Twitter or Facebook, just have a listen to this. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We don't know the rest. No, we don't. <laughs> Darren. On behalf Darren. of Australian Thoroughbred Bloodstock Widler, the team here would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and many winners for 2018. Cheers. Good luck. Cheers. Now, Pete, I think as part of our development program for our team and training budget, next year we need to send you off for some singing lessons. No, just another six scotches, Darren. <laughs> that would have improved that. Was it? Just <laughs> yeah. a bit early in the night? We were just two hours too early. Yeah, huh. Well, that so. was pretty woeful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit flat, wasn't it? Well, some people were amazed we haven't sang. Well, I think, I think there's a couple there that might have been moving their lips, but nothing was coming out. Lips, I, lip I don't think Tammy was actually... I couldn't <laughs> no. hear her singing. Well, she did look real enthused there on the And edge. I'm not sure, quite sure whether Greg was awake or asleep. I had my hand. I was puppet on him. I was using <laughs> him as a puppet, but he was... Well, we had it. Yeah, so it was a good night. Yeah. And uh, it was good to catch up and uh, have a few drinks and a bit of laugh and uh, a nice meal. And, uh, and everyone came to work today. It's amazing. So it was we, always a risk doing it on a, yeah, on a uh, Thursday. Wednesday. Was it a Wednesday? Oh, yeah, you're right. I was going to say Thursday, yeah, no. Taco Bills on a Wednesday night. No, it was a good night and a bit of fun. But, uh, and the, the singing, Hummer. Yeah, the big Hummer. 16-seater. 16, Very 16. yeah, we it? needed that. Yeah. And, right. uh, no, we had a bit of fun and everyone came to work, which was a real bonus. Yeah, well, that's right. Usually a few sickies on the back <laughs> of a Christmas party, but you must have more well-trained. They must well, love their job. Don't know about that. It might have been payday today, but <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they well, had to turn up. Exactly. Well, let's go back through last week's horses well, in this uh, Christmas edition. And as you can see, we've dressed up for it. Santa uh, you left your hat, you, oh, you left no. your costume at home, and uh, left my hat in the car. We'll put a little bit of Christmassy stuff on the back end of this, just to jazz it up a little. We're going to cop a burst from Liz. Yeah, I know. Anyway, the um, we only had three runners during the week, Darren. Three runners for the week. I, yes, I went to. We sacked a few. <laughs> yeah, a few. We've had a couple of... break down. <laughs> yeah. Couple... And we've had a couple go for a spell. Couple going for but a lot coming in. Permanent holiday. Well, you drop three off here and a couple more in the pre-training, so hopefully we can get them. The wheels are turning. Rolling for autumn racing, that lot. This um, is our winter horses, isn't it? Yep, coming in now. Yep, yep. Uh, I went to Mooney Valley last Friday, Galileo's Pearl. Was that before or after you were seen uh, looking in the Maya windows? Uh, uh, I went to the Maya windows afterwards. Right. Probably should have just went to the Maya windows full stop. They said you are giving our phone numbers. <laughs> me? Yeah. Was I? Oh, you were, you were spotted there. Oh, was, oh, was you were I? You were spotted there. Was yes, I? you were right spotted there. There you go. Amazing. Can't yeah. get away from Can't do one. anything, Pete. Can't no. do anything. So who ran our Galileo's pool? Well, yeah. What happened there? Four wide the trip. Heavily and backed. Twenties into tens. I know. None of mine. And never looked like it. None of mine. I love the post-race. <laughs> Jockey seeing the horse not going and the trainer saying... Jockey's not going. Jockey's not going. <laughs> so I love that. Actually, it was quite interesting, wasn't it? Your post-race walker goes, oh... I think it needs wetter. It's not really going that good. Yeah. Train his post race. Horse is fine. Jockey's not. No, I know. <laughs> so I don't think we'll see Walker on next day, will we? Well, he's the only one that's won on him, but he might, might be going to get a little spell. So. Might have burned his bridges. Might have. I reckon there's a young guy that would suit that horse really well. Well, one that Mick probably... Um, Ethan Brown or Bo Mertens. The two I was thinking of. That, well, I know Bo was an apprentice to Mick. Is mm. Ethan with Mick? Yep. Yep. So... Uh, Can train an apprentice... Mick, mm -hmm. do you reckon you can train a horse? I think so. Okay, well there you go. Good with stars. Well answered, well <coughs> answered. Gonna roll straight to a 2500, I reckon at Cranbourne, wasn't it? In Cranbourne a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, mm. so. Anyway, we'll see if we can get to the bottom of the big fella. Right, eh? 
I think what he was most disappointed about, Pete, was that he sat up on him the yeah. last 300 when he needed a tough run. Yeah. And even though he couldn't win, it kind of annoys me a lot, Pete. Well, he lost 800 metres. Nothing happened. Might as well just have walked around. As you said, as I there's said. a reason why these elves ride horses. <laughs> I reckon that's one of Dave Farron's famous comments. Farron can say what he likes this week. We'll what, come back to that shortly. <laughs> what elf rode this horse? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we can come to that horse pretty quickly because our next runner wasn't until Wednesday. He got the money, Mr. Moneybags. Well named. Excellent name. Who named it? I don't know, actually. I don't actually know either. No, but, uh, no, no. it was good to see that horse third up, trained by Robbie Griffiths, um, son of Ritten Tycoon Pete, mm -hmm. and uh, third run in his career, yep. winning at Sandown impressively over the full brother to Brazen Bow and about eight lengths to the rest. Yeah, and, and continually... Never looked like it. Continually running away. Probably had the hardest run of the race. He did a bit of work. Another one of our horses that was back from tens into fives. Yeah, I, don't, I missed out there too. <laughs> Although, I didn't mind missing out. I'll First up with Pearl. Blinkers. Yeah, nah, he looked Blinkers first horse. time. Yeah. Set outside the leader, Bo Mertens. <clears throat> Got the job done, never looked in doubt. 400 metres straight at Santa. It's always nice when your jockey hasn't moved to the 200 metre mark, isn't it? It is a long straight when you're <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> but he did the job really well. Great ride, right, Bo Mertens. He's lost his time, so it makes it hard. But yep. well, there's a reason he ran second in the Premiership last year, Pete, and uh, that was because he can ride. And the reason why he didn't have a claim at the end of it, because he rode a lot can of ride. Yep. Can ride, and sometimes we forget these things. Like, he nearly beat Craig Williams to win the Premiership, as an apprentice. Yeah, that's right. No yeah. small feat. No, <laughs> big effort. Well, you got to go back to the Darren Gouchies. And you say um, in Victoria, there's, you know, we can pin, pick 10 jockeys we could have on our horse any yeah. day of the week. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then you've got a kid who's come from nowhere, but he's well bred, isn't he? Yeah, Peter Mertens. Peter Mertens, he's one of, what, 15 kids? <laughs> yeah, well, Bo is one of about 15. Yeah, yeah the Mertens and the Morgandys, there's plenty of them. Well, Pete Mertens wrote. We're his first group one winner with She's Archie in the SA Lakes. So, uh, so he's obviously can ride. He rode probably about 10,000 winners in his time. Yeah, and then he got injured. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we can uh, really say also um, great job by the trainer, Robbie Griffiths. Yeah, no, and I think he was pretty happy with the result too. Um, very happy. Very happy, as was, uh, like I said, a few of the owners. And Dave Farron being one. Dave Farron, 10s yeah. into fives. That's what happened. Had to be done. He's on the phone to me. All blind installations will be cheap over the next month. <laughs> Free, I heard. Free? Free. Oh, I don't know Pull up your that. blinds. And that might have something to say about that. Well, the other thing is there's a couple other written tycoons there, Dave. Yeah, let's have a look at these written tycoons, Pete. Um, we've got Tycoon Griffo, obviously going to Robbie Griffiths. And yeah. we've got a written tycoon out of Jilly Mac going to Archie Alexander. Let's have a look at these two specimens. We've still got a couple of shares left in. Well, if you want to get a nice horse, and there's no better sire in Australia at the moment than Written Tycoon. Aren't they well put together? They are strong, mm. they're two-year-olds, and they will be racing by March, April. Yep, both. Mm. So, if you want to get a horse, and you want a city-class horse, it's hard to go past Written Tycoon. Yep. and uh, There's only 5% left in Typhoon Griffo. Yeah. And there's about 30% left in Julie Mac. She's only just, that one's only just come on the market, and it's going Fairly quickly. Oh, Christmas party people had a close eye, close look, should I say, and liked, liked it. and took it on. So, Good. Well, late Wednesday, Pete, we had Red Handle go around up in uh, Doombin. Yeah, Tony I miss, Golan and. Um, I missed the race. You missed the race, know? did you? <coughs> I was Otherwise traveling, engaged. Travelling out with Christmas drinks, staff drinks. Well, she never looked like winning, but she ran fifth and uh, she wasn't beaten that far, but she kind of found a mark up there and um, just find it hard to yeah. break through, Peter, and I think. Doombin doesn't really suit because it does favour yeah, on-speed horses and now that Eagle Farm's out of play for another year, mm, um, nice. just makes it hard for a horse like that that settles just off the speed yeah. and has to hit home. So unless she can just strike the right race and needs everything to go her way, it's just hard to see her breaking through anytime soon. Yeah, rightio. Those... But she went from 8s out to 14s. Well, they sort of knew. So we had they? two come in and one go out. Yeah, but no one was on there. Sunshine Coast and well, Gold Coast is a Worst track if you talk down, but, but is it Sapphire Coast? But I don't know how far away are they from where he is. Oh, not that far. Bad now. Yeah, anyway. See what he can do. Yep. Um, so that was it. Three runners. That's the, one winner. That's 33%. We needed right that right. winner, Pete. Yeah, well, Been a while. Treading water there for a little while. Yeah, we've had no luck really. Horses getting beaten photos. Well, they're either being 
couple getting injured or out, or we've just been unlucky. You know, P. K. and a few of those have been yeah. around about the mark without winning. So, and Mr. Moneybags was a good example. Like his first two runs had back me next start, and Julie saluted. Right, we've got a couple of back me next starts coming up. All right, let's see how we can go this Shouldn't week. Should say that today's Thursday. Yes, as we. Where's our next runner? Saturday. Uh, yeah, we were going to have one tomorrow, but it's not. So that's Condover Hall, which goes to Saturday. Well, so let's start there. Start Race one, Cotton, Saturday, Cotton. 1850. Michelle ten, Payne. 10 in the field, drew 10. A leader, and we draw <coughs> 10. So we've got to go to the front, do we? I'd say what's going to happen, this is going to get him rolling, and get him rolling and keep him rolling. Just right hope on. nothing takes us on. Good uh, run last start. Really good. Run second. Yep. Got yep. beaten by, I think it was a DK Weir horse. It was a weary horse, yeah. It was good to beat him yesterday, Pete. We actually got one up on him, did we? That was a... I think he's about 35 to 1. Yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> anyway. a full, full brother of brazen bow, so yes, we got one on him. Um, well, so Saturday... Um, well, two things. You know, 1850, extra distance. Perfect, and hopefully a bit of confidence for the horse from that run. A bit of confidence for the owners. <laughs> a lot of confidence for the owners. Um, he's got to be good each way chance without yeah. knowing too much about the others. There's two in there had a bit of form, the rest had none. So is he a top three chance? Definite top three chance, is, good good winning chance. Is he a top two chance? A good top two chance and a definite and winning chance. So what's the trainer saying? Uh, she she said he well her words to me via text were he's trained on, he's in good nick, but we'll get a voice update tomorrow from Michelle. For the owners only. Yes. Yeah, we'll, Confidential. We'll add the other little bit in to the owners. All right. So he's going there to win. He's going yeah. well. So well, I mean, gets his chance. We'll certainly be disappointed. He's ready now. Is we're, he fourth up? Fourth up. Yeah. So uh, Look, fifth up. Fifth up. Yeah. Right. So ready. Ready to go. Also there, and one we need to see improve is Bloodlet. Yeah. Um, Hasn't done much this prep, Pete. First two runs okay. The stall run very disappointing. Yes. First up here at Ballarat, she travelled into it. Looks like fitness got her. Our app was a non-run on track, but she did run on, and then Stall was just mystifying. Like, gosh, uh, I don't think the track suits another jockey that sat up early? Yeah, Jack didn't ride her out. He's, Jack's not sat on. Sat up. Mm. And it's, it's like you said, the disappointing fact is they get nothing out of the run. I mean, even if they can't win, at least they get a bit of fitness. I thought that horse was coming over the fence yeah, then. I don't think he'd like the wrap-up. It's not bloodlet, is it? <laughs> um, uh, but so so what, happened, what distance we have? So we're at 1850, which is getting... Who rides? Jai McNeil. Right. So we've got a senior, a good Sign senior. Significant jockey change, is it? Yeah, Jack's there. He's probably going to bloody bell me, but... Well, you just... Sometimes when they're not rider. informed, you change your rider, you change a few things up to see what happens. Well, it'd be nice to see it ridden out for the last 200, Pete. Yeah. That's why he's not on it. And about five in front when he's riding around. Well, wow. even if it gets... She's beaten. got to run top three tomorrow for us to be on track to where we want to go, and that's to be competitive in a 64 mid all, in town. There's a lot of horses, Pete, that run around in their benchmarks. Now, she's a half to group one winner, and she's a filly we'd like to see if we could get some city form. Yep. She's a long way away from that now, but when she gets out to a right distance, yep. she's a grinder, and sometimes these jockeys, if they give up at the 400, some of these horses, they find it for the last 200. Yeah. And when you sit up on them, you give them no chance to show what they can do late, because their staying quality kicks in. Mm -hmm. So your instructions for Saturday, Pete, to Jai McNeil is, I don't care if it can't win, make sure it Just goes through the line. Right, right, right. Because she may pick up we, and attack the line. We had a nice little example during the year with High Largo. That's similar. right. Had to give the jockey the proper instructions. Yep, so I will make sure that Mr McNeil rides her out to the line. Like, look, we needed a run top three. She should be in that grade. Yeah, so I think field of eight. So All right. we wouldn't want to be too far back than third. <laughs> So that's there. You're going to go to the Valley, I think. Who am I going to see run there, Pete? PK's in the Vobus Gold Carrot, 120,000 plus extras race. That's got to be tough. Barrier one. 12, look, there's two things that probably... I can't believe up. this horse keeps drawing inside. Three out of four in the last... Who rides? We've got Craig Williams on because um, oh, well, Jordan Charles is in Sydney. There's some hope. Jordan did nothing wrong. No, no. So no, he's really all right. That's Just had no luck. Yep. So normally what happens here is like Mr Moneybags, John McNeil rode at the first two starts and got beat. Yeah. He couldn't ride, he had to go to Chuka. Bo Mertens jumps on, it wins. 
Now this horse, yeah. Jordan Charles has been on it for what, the last three or four times. Yep, had no luck. Had no luck at all, and he, he can't ride it because he's got to go to Sydney, so Craig Williams will jump on. You know what's going to happen, don't you? He'll take the 5% winning fees <laughs> home. Yeah, that will happen. That's the luck of it, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's a tough game. Sometimes we need that to have to roll our way. So. Yeah, so we're going to see how Williams um, rides it. One's an interesting one, isn't it? It's 1,200, and I mean, ideally he probably should be the Where's, third Well, it depends on the rail, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it'll be a tough race. It's one of these gold carrot things. They're yeah. worth a lot of money and there'll be some good real good horses there. We're, the, a top, we're a top four chance. Yeah, and the horse has been, like, every run this prep, he's been he's really genuine. good. Yeah, very honest. I want to see him over a mile, but yeah, well, I'm I, not the trainer. I suppose these money races, when you're a Vibus horse, it's you can sort of have a bit of a crack at them, but sometimes yeah. you, sometimes maybe you're better following the... Well, sometimes what, you can chase the distance, big money yeah. and get none of it. And then sometimes you can go for the easy kill and get it all. We've probably seen a little bit of that over a couple of months, but anyway. You haven't shot anyone? No. Okay. Just, just, just saw an it observation. out in general. Just not, not just air horses. <laughs> Ransom Money, Darren, uh, contests a benchmark 64 at the Valley. Um, Will he get a run, Pete? His third emergency. There's been two scratched. He's drawn a nice gate. We've got Ethan Brown on. So we've got uh, a couple of... Inform rider? Yeah, he rode couple of doubles, or at least a double last week at the Valley, along with two or three other apprentices that are going really well. Um, yeah, so we're going to get a run. It is a bit of a throw at the stumps. It's probably a hard, harder 64 you're going to find. There's only two or three of these types on a Saturday. So both horses uh, going to the Valley on Saturday, Peter, are both going to have a throw at the stumps. Yeah. Go as good as big the, money? Go as good as the Aussies, Darren. Well, I hope so, because uh, sometimes you chase this big money and it's very elusive, very hard to get. So, yeah. anyway... If he doesn't get a run, we've got him in at, uh, was it Werribee or Geelong? I can't remember, one of the two, and yep. then there's another race. So there's plenty of races after, but anyway, hopefully... He's going well. What do you think of his last run? Great. Great. <laughs> Pilot error, as you'd say, and I think... Uh, what did he do wrong? Just didn't lead, Darren. Who was that? Mr Yendall is on holidays. Is Maybe he? Maybe he's gone away just to have a think about his riding. No, he, he admitted that he should have just held Shouldn't the lead. Shouldn't have had the lead up yeah. on the latest track feet. Then he was just running into bums all the way up the straight. So, uh, that was at Werribee, wasn't it? That was at Werribee, yeah. Mm. Glad I wasn't there to see it. <laughs> so, we didn't have to be there. We've seen enough on TV. Yeah, disappointing. But anyway, he gets to the valley. It's a track that should Hard suit track. him. Yeah, but yeah, if he gets up on the pace on from the Barrier speed. 5... I don't think Ethan Brown will be doing anything wrong the way he's riding. Well, if you're going to get a two kilo climb, you might as well use it properly and be up somewhere near the lead. Well, he's only a 60 rider, so he'd be down in the weights, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's only got 50, 56 or 54. 56, yeah. so you get down to 54 or whatever. Something like that, or so 56 a chance. with the climb. No, just got to get a run. Right, eh? Um, uh, nothing on Sunday, you can go to church. Again? Yeah, and then Monday, I don't know if you go to church on Christmas Day, but you can have we we'll to have a bit of a roast and some pudding and a, and a sleep for four hours during the afternoon. I'll have no staff, Pete, and a hundred horses to feed. Oh, what do you reckon I'll be doing? Well, you can do that first. <laughs> I'll tackle my five kids out and presents. Well, not so much the You only got the five coming this yeah, year? Yeah. No, the, the rest aren't coming? Not coming. Mm. Haven't heard from them. They've dropped off. No, no. The house's not big enough? <laughs> not enough money to go around. Between horse. you and the Mertens. Mm. All right, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got Artie Sarno at Geelong on Boxing Day. 2400, but he has got a little bit of a foot, foot. Might be an abscess coming out. So he's unlikely. Uh, where he thought of it coming out today, he'd be a chance. If not, there's probably a... be rock hard that track. There's no rain forecast, is there? It's not hot, but it's no rain. So, mm. and after that, there's an option at Cranber the following Friday. So. He's only ready for the paddock, that horse. Yeah, look, he's done a reasonable job this prep, I reckon. With a horse that's probably going to get better over the next 12 months, hopefully. Yep. And where are we going after that? You might go to Caulfield to see Perugia kick First off. First up. Yep. Who's riding him? Uh, it'll be... Uh, Craig Williams. Craig Williams, yes. Who won on him? Craig Williams and Dean Yeah. One at Donald, one at Caulfield. Caulfield won, we'll take. Yeah, Yandel keeps reminding us about that. That's good. He went away on holidays though, remember that? Yeah, well, yeah. You know, I see he's starting to get a little bit of selective where he rides now. Not as hungry <laughs> as he was a year ago, is he? A uh, couple of group ones in his bank account and he's sort of... Just ease the foot. You just see the foot coming off the accelerator. Yeah. Eh? Won't quite Just go. pick and choosing now. We used to go everywhere. Eh? We used to go everywhere. Now he's... Come a bit of loof. 
a bit like DK Weir, <laughs> just only going to the races a couple of times a week. So we are saying he's just by name now, the stable. Well, you know, what I'm saying is these places, you can tell the ones that have got money, they don't go to the races. That's why I'm there every day, Pete. Yes, same. Following your aunt. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Is that it? Be good to see Perugia kick off. Yeah, well, he'll need the run, probably. Yeah, he will, but the man, I think he's a nice horse in the making. So hopefully he can bring his early three-year-old form back to um, yeah, be summer in autumn. Yeah. yeah, you've seen him trial? Trialed up OK, yeah. Give him I, nothing? I, I, <laughs> give him every, nothing he is here? This bloke is going to give us something. He's coming over to have a chat. Every time I give anything out about trial form, they run uh, ordinary. No so I'm just, he, just, get, he didn't go any good first up last prep, did he? Uh, we had four or five runs trying to get him out to sort of that 1400 so how fast race on 12. boxing day 1200 caulfield he'll definitely need a run he'll be run off his feet well he? run off his feet but he's going to be up in a higher class than he's been used to so, so he's not if that's what you're saying no he'll be there to run well Darren. <laughs> wednesday if uh this bloke <laughs> what's this the vanilla series <laughs> yeah. hey, if we get no over... flavor here right no, no, no. well <laughs> just been a bit shy the last 30 odd days, Darren. <laughs> to Mr. Muddy Bags. You told me we were going to have 10 winners in December. <laughs> we're going to be lucky to get Jeez, two. We're going to have to have a good next four or five days. Uh, we've got Equieto potentially at Panola. Got When's this? Uh, the day after Boxing Day. It must be Wednesday. Wednesday. Panola. I've never been to Panola, Pete. No, I don't know whether I have either. I Where have, is Panola? I've been there to watch footy. Where uh, is it? Oh, South Australia. Is it? What, past Bordertown? No, 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 not that far, I don't think. Well, Porter Town's on the border. No, but it's not that far up. Oh, down, is it? Near back, Mount Gambia or something? Back towards um, Millicent Mount Gambia way, I think. Well, you talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to Google, I'm going to put it in my maps and see how far it is. Anyway, Paul reckons the horse is trained on. Yep. He has got a little nick on the cannon bone, but it's very minor. The only thing that would prevent him from running is if he had to treat it with antibiotics and he wouldn't be able to run. Well, there, any there you go. Panola is three hours and 34 minutes away from here. <laughs> It's 310 k's. And I'm 10 minutes that way. So, so it's three it's hours to you, yeah. four hours from me. Well, um, maybe no. I just stay at the answer is The answer is I won't be a Panola. You Can might be. Jack Hill asked the other day whether you've got a helico helicopter. He said he'd like to The way to we're going, it. I couldn't get a plastic one. But Jack would probably still get boxed in on the rails in the helicopter, wouldn't he? <laughs> He'll go too early. <laughs> if he went too early, he'd be fall out the door. Yeah. Anyway, look, he's there. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He, um, Paul's happy with the way he's trained on. I think the key is out to 1,200. I think he indicated him, and he's obviously a bit fitter. Trialled up nice with a horse fizz the other day. So right, eh? And that's it. He'd be probably nearly disappointed if he didn't win at Panola. Right. That's not a get-on, it's just a statement. Just a statement. Yeah, well, you've got no get-ons. <laughs> no, that's um, it. No so more. then, we just, I know we got a couple get, looking at Cranbourne the following Friday yeah, night. My but, shiny but, choice will be back in. And Dubai. Galileo's pill, maybe. Yep. Anyway, that's all good. Well, this is it, Pete. Mm. I was just going to ask, where does where we get for 2017, you reckon? Well, that's different to the season. Oh, for the year? Uh, oh, I'd okay. say, what, 45? Because yeah. we had a real good back half of the first half. Mm. How many have we had this six months? 15. S 16. 16, and I reckon No, no, had... 16, this is three months, four months. How long's the season? Four? It'll be four at the end of... Ladies and gentlemen, Mass <laughs> was not his strong point. No, I'm talking the year, calendar year. Twelve months. Yeah, so we've had six day winners this season. Yes, since in the, in the five months. It's been five months or so. Yes, Pete. What, August? Five months. <laughs> Gee, we've had a shit last two months. I just swear. <laughs> I remember we've had mid forties because we had a good first yeah, half. Yeah. Anyway, we came home with a rush at the end of last season. I'm glad I asked that question, man. Yeah, I'm glad. Um, <laughs> We can't oh. work out how many winners. We definitely had a few highlights. Question without notice. Yeah. Look, I'd say um, Broadway first. Our horse uh, of the year. Being uh, our horse of the year and winning all those races through the season yep. and really stamping himself as a, as a city class yeah. horse. Yeah, we just A need genuine him. city class horse. I'd say Yogi uh, would be a highlight for me because uh, we bought him off a maiden win in New Zealand mm -hmm. and he got through to compete in the Bar Cummings and you know, be competitive behind El Mandan yeah, and certainly horses. beat some good horses. Yeah. I think buying Tiberian for the Melbourne Cup whilst he uh, was ridden poorly in the Cup. Um, the highlight was, you know, when you buy these horses for the Cup to actually get him there. Yeah. And to see him win four out of five in France before he arrived here. All listed in group level. Yeah, like really, really a good ride um, and exciting on the day. 
uh, that, that'd be my lot highlights. I, I think the other highlight for me, High Largo, um, winning that race at Sandown before she went to start because yep. that was a really a long term plan yeah. um, to try and do that for her breeding career. Um, so, you know, a lot of planning and a lot of work and some good work by yourself went into making that happen. Yep. Um, Even the half brother. Yeah, well, Falago, like he was written off, he was gone, wasn't he? We throw him at, throw him at a track where he's performed and he did the job for us. Yeah, at like he was gone, run. retirement yeah. stage, and he's really, um, he really just got the job done. Yeah, and um, a couple of the kids that rode our horse, like Benny Thompson, you know, we, we found out there's some good kids out there, we mentioned them before, and yeah. we need to probably use them more for certain horses. And, I'd also say the emergence of um, Archie Alexander and yeah, Matt Kamani yeah, and Ballarat yeah. as, as serious trainers. Um, you know, I think that's a real highlight for the industry. And, and I suppose, you know, even Michelle Payne getting involved in riding and training. And okay, she hasn't won a race for us yet, but, uh, you know, she ran second on Condova Hall yeah. and he's not far off a win. So, and I think. I think you can go on and on about it. Yeah, what the, the highlights are, but they don't have to be winning to be highlights. No, I, I think there's you know there's hey, a lot of excitement around. And the two Snitzel Colts, you know, the highlight by those highlight for the people's pockets. Highlight for uh, <laughs> Liz, it was yeah. when she found out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. what about you, Pete? What would your what well would, look from how a do personal you sum up the year? I first Hong Kong takes a cake for you. Yeah, absolutely, but those five, I mean. They're all got merit. There's others there. I mean, even the emergence of Perugia from a horse who struggled to win a mate with the five or six runs. And then to win in town. The Donald run, which got everyone excited, and then they'd go to town and, well, the two runs in town, the win where Craig Weir basically lifted him off the canvas. And then he performed at Saturday City level, and he was beating two links, running fifth. So all of a sudden you're going from a maiden class horse to a horse that looks like it'll be genuine city class at some level. Um, yeah, um, oh, I think just you're a jockey who's giving you a highlight? Yeah, obviously we who would you give Ride of the Year to? Ride of the Year? There's a question. Gee, now you got me on. Uh, I didn't mind the ride of, what's the name, young um, Michael D on High Largo. Yeah, like, was, especially I, when the pre he knew that was the last run. Yeah. And we had no other choices. No. And he knew that because it was told to him. Yeah. So Plus it was good that we got it down in the weights. And yeah, and, and I think under pressure that was a good ride. Um, oh gee, Craig Williams was... Put in a couple of great rides for us late when he was trying to win the yeah, um, a, pre Premiership. And a couple of his... I think outside his comfort zone, the way he rides, a couple on Yogi we had to really work for the wins. First We're, time I've ever seen him puffing when he got up the horse. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and obviously we get great value out of Dean around the bush on horses where... I think Sar Plain was a perfect example. You know, we're just going six day back up, and he took off halfway yeah. through the race. The race was over in 100 metres. So, I mean, Johnny Allen's been a bit yeah. of a highlight, especially yep. his post races, because you can't understand a word <laughs> yeah. he says. He, he can yeah. actually be saying anything. Probably does sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, but Johnny's been good for us. He's, I don't know. I don't well, know what the breakdown he, he, is. He's really now set himself as a, a good flat rider, hasn't he? Well, I think he's flat slash jumps. Well, no, the other way. You know, he's a jumps rider that rode a few on the flat. Now he's a, you know, he, he's got his place there in well, on flat racing in, in Melbourne and the country. Well, Volatile Mix, he's a group one winner yeah. in the derby. So, I mean... He went on Yogi at Flemington. I think that was his first Flemington winner. Yeah, and he was wrapped with that because um, that was an opportunity come about with the swings and roundabouts with jockeys. And yep. um, he took it, you know, it was probably his strength that won yep. in the race in the end. Well, there you go. There's so a few highlights. Probably, probably ten at the end. <laughs> we've probably missed a lot. Yeah. If you want to email in to Pete what your ATB highlight was for the year and for the best comment, yeah. we'll find a prize. Got something left at home? Oh, there'll be some bag of nuts left over for Christmas Day. No stubby, I'll just 300 no. you put out. There's five left in there. Christmas party? <laughs> yeah. Five, 300 stubby, I'll I got five left. A lot of good drinkers in the camp. I've got to invoice all them out this week, Pete. There's a lot of good drinkers or a lot of thieves. We're going to invoice them all <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> well, they're 20 bucks each. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, look, no, just to wrap it, it up, um, yep. on behalf of the whole team here at ATB, um, we really do sincerely hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, you celebrate in 2018 and all the best to your family. Stay safe and let's have a big 2018 with your horses. And that's bye from me and bye from him. <laughs>